All right. Hey, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're dialing in from. This is our fall orientation. Uh, welcome if you are a brand new student. Welcome back if you are a student who's been here for a little bit. Uh, we're going to take some time today, should not take super long, but just to go over some information about the program in general and answer any questions that you may have. Um, you can either choose to uh, wait till the end to ask questions or you can interrupt me. I do not mind interruptions at all. So this is me. Uh, my name is Susan Undercuffler. I'm the program director and I teach a couple of classes in the program. And you can read about me, my background and the other faculty members and their backgrounds on our program webpage if you have not already. So I am kind of a one stop shop for you guys in terms of advising, uh, mentoring, helping you choose classes, writing recommendation letters, whatever you guys may need. If you just want to reach out and touch base and say, am I doing this the right way? Am I choosing my classes the right way? Uh, please go ahead and contact me and I will, um, I'm always available. My phone is always on. I'm always happy to jump on a Zoom with you guys. So please don't hesitate to uh, let me know if you need anything throughout the program. This program in particular is a lot of fun. I'm very glad you're here. Um, we focus both equally on forensics and conservation. So the application of forensic sciences to conservation uh, wildlife management, ecology, uh, you name it. And it is jointly offered through the WEC Department, Wildlife Ecology and Conservation, and the Maple Center for Forensic Medicine. And one thing I did want to let you all know is that you should be very proud of yourselves because this is not an easy program to be admitted to uh, necessarily because the chair of the WEC Department decides who gets admitted and who doesn't, um, and it is tough. So congratulations, I'm, I'm very glad you're here. And uh, there's a unique opportunity for you in this program in that you get to participate in the Wildlife Ecology and Conservation Department at UF, even though you are an online student. And I'll talk about that in a bit. So hopefully by this point, um, and if you have not, this is how you access your courses. So all of our courses are delivered via Canvas and you log on at this elearning.ufl.edu site. And when you do, you should see all of your courses pop up for you. Um, this is how you access your courses, uh, like it says up here, how you submit assignments, take quizzes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so this is, you know, your go to place for accessing your UF courses. A couple of tips, if you are unfamiliar with online learning, this might be a, a, a unique environment for you. It's not always an easy environment, and it is certainly not one that uh, there's some myths surrounding online education that they are, that online courses are easier than in-person courses, um, that you do not need to try as hard, uh, and it's just not true. In some cases, they can be much more challenging than in-person courses. So I really encourage you to get connected with us in the program. Take some time to familiarize yourselves with Canvas with the online platform. So meaning Canvas and how Canvas is set up, how your courses are set up. Read the syllabi for your courses. It's really, really important that you understand what each individual instructor is looking for and how they structure their courses. We don't always teach the same, okay? So have a dedicated space in your house, in your apartment, in your office, wherever you plan to access your courses, have a dedicated space for it. 
and this is really important, and I think we've all come to realize this is very important um, throughout our experiences with COVID and having to share space or find space. Um, it is very important that you treat this just as you would if you were going to class on campus. Okay, so create a study space, create a schedule, and stay organized. And this, in terms of handling a grad, a graduate school education, is a lot more important than if you were taking courses on campus, because you you are solely responsible for your progress and understanding what's expected of you and keeping on top of things. There's not going to be anybody looking over your shoulder all the time. Okay, so it's it's up to you. We have a, uh, a wildlife forensic sciences and conservation and WFSC hub canvas course. Okay, and if I can do this and you can see it, hopefully, um, this is our, our, for our student page. So it's available for anyone, all right? And on this page, you have a lot of resources at your disposal. Um, and use this as kind of a go-to page if you have questions. Uh, before you get frustrated or before you reach out via email or anything like that, you may wanna check this page for um, any type of information that you need as far as you know, the program, uh, how to stay in touch with people, what's going on. Um, I send announcements to you all through this page. And I send you emails through this page. So this is uh, a great resource for you. Um, so check that out frequently because I, I update it very frequently. This U, UF online resources page, this is a very nice, um, I don't think I have it pulled up, but this is a very nice page to go to to find a lot of things that you might need throughout your education. Um, and it's really important because we are online to establish relationships with me, with your other faculty members and with your peers. And it, you can do this, believe it or not, even though we're online. Okay, so I have a lot of activities and things we'll talk about in a bit, um, but I have every student that I have talked to throughout this program has said that the friendships that they've made have lasted a very long time. They have found jobs and internships and other resources through their peers in the program. So really, really, you know, interact with us, with them. We have a Facebook page, we have a main Facebook page, and then we also have a student run page, which is nice. Uh, we do have an Instagram. And what's nice, because we are uh, offered through the Wildlife Ecology and Conservation Department, you can participate in their seminars. They are online. Okay, and there is also a WEC Grad Student Association that you can join. And this is really nice because if you join their student association, you can find mentors in their faculty. Okay, you can have mentors in our faculty too, but you can participate almost as much as an on campus student in that department. All right, so take advantage of that for sure. And then our bots want to study abroad. Um, this is a fantastic opportunity to really take the concepts that you learn in your courses and apply them in real life. All right, so we took this trip for the first time. Our, our first trip overseas was this past May. We had a great time. Um, it was a fantastic program. This is a program that is offered every May. Um, applications should open tomorrow or next week. I would say next week sometime maybe. Um, so I once I know that the applications are open, I will email you all and let you know. Um, it is worth six credits. We are in country from three to four weeks. Uh, so it's a very intense program. We have an online component to the study abroad before we go and once we come back. So uh, you'll be doing some online presentations once we come back. Before we go, we will meet to kind of all get together, get to know each other. I'll talk about what's involved. Um, but you can see from the highlights, we cover a lot. Um, so everything from uh, we let you play with some chemical immobilization and dart guns. We take you up in a helicopter and have you practice shooting from a helicopter. It's a blast. 
Uh, we work hands-on with rhinos, with elephants. You get to collar a rhino, ear knock a rhino, um, and you get to see and work with an abundance of wildlife. And we travel pretty constantly throughout this program. So we spend maybe three to four days in one location, and then we move on. So enrollment in this is not guaranteed. You have to apply. It's open to graduate students and undergraduate students, and it's open to people who might not necessarily be in our program. So it's very competitive. Last year, we filled up and had a full cohort in January, when usually the application period is open till March. Um, so I encourage you, if this is something that you're interested in, get your applications in early. And I start doing interviews in uh, probably late October, early November. So it's, you know, we're, we're looking for people who are very flexible, patient, because things change very quickly in Africa, uh, but people who are also adventurous and want to experience wildlife up close and personal. We also have an opportunity for you in the program to do research or to do an internship. Um, this is actually our student, Alicia. She did some research this year. She's currently in the process of publishing. She presented it at the Wildlife Disease Association. Um, so just an example of what you can do. You can work with us on research projects. You can partner with other universities, which is what Alicia did. Um, you can receive uh, one to six credits, one to five credits, depending on the scope and the focus of your project. So if you're out in the field doing field work, work, uh, research and you're collecting data, that might be worth more than say a literature review, but you can do either or. Um, we help you develop a project, come up with a, a focus topic. Um, we work with you throughout the entire process. And if you are currently employed, that may qualify. We just need to determine whether or not, uh, depending on what you're doing, what the circumstances are. Uh, you do not have to relocate, although we have had students relocate to do an internship. We had someone who interned at the National Tiger Sanctuary this year. Um, and the time to complete these may vary. So you may decide to do an internship and you know it lasts a full semester. Maybe an internship lasts a few weeks and that's fine. Uh, your research can last a semester. It can last the entire duration of your program. It just depends on what you're looking for. We highly encourage you to take the communications course. If you are planning to do research in the future, it will be very, very helpful. Um, we can help you publish your work um, and you can uh, find more information about both of these on that Canvas page that I showed you and start planning early because the development of a research project and or an internship can take a long time. So do not wait until your final semester. You will not be allowed to do this in your final semester. It just takes too long to plan, but we've had people do all kinds of research projects and there's some examples uh, on Canvas. A Couple of other things that we offer, uh, like I said, student mentoring. So you can meet with myself, you can meet with Dr. Adams who does most of our student mentoring. Um, on the student page, Canvas page, there is a sign up to meet with Dr. Adams. There's also sign ups to meet with me. Um, so you can book an appointment to meet with uh, one or the other of us. And we can help you with planning and advising for your program, career advice, internship advice, et cetera, et cetera. So take advantage of that. We also offer monthly happy hours. Tonight is our first happy hour of the fall semester. So join us at six o'clock. And there's a link to that on the Canvas page as well. Just go to the Zoom conferences tab at six o'clock Eastern Daylight Time tonight. The months that we don't have a happy hour, we have a student symposium, which is uh, it's an opportunity for we have guest speakers that come and talk to you about all aspects of uh, careers, different careers that you can look for. Um, we also have the opportunity for students to present on their research or their internship, or their jobs. Um, so check those out. It's a great way to find out what's going on in the field. The happy hours are fun. They're just a fun time for us all. You can come with a cocktail. You don't have to. Um, it's just an hour. We take some time. And we just chat about whatever's on our mind. 
We also have a genetics course series. So we have a series of three genetics courses. They all build on each other. You take one course per semester and you start in the fall with the beginning course. Um, and then you progress through the other two courses. You end in the summer. You have a great uh, solid foundation in wildlife forensic genetics. The courses are taught by working professionals in wildlife forensic, forensic genetics. So we're very happy to have them uh, teaching for us. And it's a really nice experience if you are interested in genetics. Um, we determine whether or not you need a prerequisite course on a case-by-case -case basis. So if you miss the opportunity to take the first genetics course in the fall, you don't necessarily need that um, for to, to take the second course. We can determine that uh, based on your background and experiences. We also have some in-person lab classes that you may want to check out. These are about a week long and they're worth three credits. Um, so that's another option for you. So I mentioned staying in touch and and communication. And it's it's very, very important because we, because we're in an online environment, you know, I can't I can't nitpick you. I can't remind you all the time of things. Um, so please, please don't, you know, let a lot of time go by between checking your email. Check your email every day. All right, keep up with things very frequently. UF email is how you communicate any questions about program stuff, all right? Use your UF email. If you have course specific questions, you can also use uh, your Canvas, the Canvas inbox for your courses. Um, so you can utilize either or. Um, depending on your, your needs, all right? But they serve different purposes, so just try to remember. But if you email me from your Canvas inbox about a registration question, I'm not going to ignore you. I will still answer you. Uh, the UF library is awesome. So take advantage of it. Utilize it. You will need it throughout your time with us. Um, you access it as an online student by... Uh, downloading and logging into a VPN, you need to access the VPN. There are instructions on that Canvas Hub page for uh, accessing, downloading the VPN. You can access the library without it. So, um, and if you run into problems, there's always, uh, you can email me, you can email the help desk. Um, but the library is amazing. You can find all kinds of resources on it. So please uh, utilize it. It's great. A couple of other resources you may not know about, but you are entitled to your Gator One card, your UFID. This is your, your official UFID. Um, it gets you into activities and things on campus. Um, it can get you discounts uh, at restaurants, movie theaters, et cetera, et cetera. So you have access to a Gator One card, okay? Um, there are instructions for that on the hub page as well. The help desk, like I mentioned, the help desk is great. They usually, typically they respond within 24 to 48 hours. They're very um, helpful. Uh, they are available if you run into any problems with your courses or accessing things, you can call them or you can email them. Um, and they will help you one-on-one. -on -one. So they're, they're a great resource. Do not hesitate to access them. Career Connection Center, um, Office of Graduate Professional Development. Utilize these for resume advice, uh, CV advice, career uh, paths, All right? So check those out. And then as a student, you also have access to some free uh, things that you may not know about. LinkedIn Learning has all kinds of free courses. I have had students take advantage of this. They've gotten a lot out of it. So LinkedIn Learning free courses, it's awesome. Software licensing. So you can access free versions of software uh, because you are a UF student. So if check that out and see what's available. Um, I have been able to access and download a, a whole bunch of different products, including Adobe products. So definitely check those out. The handbook. So one thing that I do want to stress, if 
you are a new student in the program, and even if you've been here for a while, the handbook is, is you have to be familiar with some of the items in the handbook. Don't think because you're online that you don't need to know or be familiar with policies and procedures uh, at University of Florida. It's still really important, especially the honor code. So as a student, you're bound by this honor code and you can read the honor code uh, at this by accessing the grad student handbook. There's a link to this on our page, Canvas page. Um, so check out grading systems and planning for graduation. Obviously the honor code, there are policies that you need to be aware of. Okay, and we are not going to handhold and say, you know, now don't forget this policy you need to read. You as a student are responsible for being familiar with these. On the Canvas page for all students, that hub page, um, there are two assignments. And one of them is taking a quiz um, about the honor code and the Maple Center policies. All right, so you have to do those in order to graduate. So make sure that you're familiar with this. And it's also a really nice resource for you. There's a lot of things in this handbook that you are not probably aware of. So uh, look that up. Now I can turn it over to whoever wants to chime in and we can talk about all the fun things like registration and drop ad. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for making time. So most of you would have heard from uh, myself or Rachel. Uh, Rachel, if you want to turn on your mic and video and just say hi to the students, that'd be great. It's nice to meet you all. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Rachel. Um, so you've been in touch with our office, which can be reached at forensics at ahc.ufl.edu. And as uh, your program director, Susan, had mentioned, it is very important for us to be in contact or let us know when anything comes up as an emergency. And we need to help you. UF is very big and uh, we don't want you to be just struggling everywhere to try to find an answer. Our office should be a first contact and we will guide you through the next steps of what you need to do. So by now, all of you should have been registered for your classes, but if there was some issue that led to you not getting registered, feel free to contact us and we will get you to the right channels to make sure that you're registered. The drop ad has also ended as of today. I mean, as of last night, midnight, I would say. So anything beyond this would have the liability. And um, also, if you are not doing the right steps, there may be additional punitive grades if you fail to withdraw from a class due to any other reasons. So, um, you know, life do happen. So if you are falling sick or something else has come up, please reach out to your instructors. That is a first and foremost thing, and also contact our office to let us know that something has come up and we can evaluate the case and get you the right uh, petitions or forms that you need to submit. We also have students, I believe, in our session today who are either in the certificate track and uh, maybe want to consider the master's track in the future. So if you're planning to move from the certificate to the master's track, please work with our admissions team so we can help you fill in the right application because there are certain nuances that you've got to indicate in the application. We do not want you to fill it in correctly and get the application rejected. So please work with us and we'll get you um, moved from one track to the other. But there are also additional documentation that is needed, which would be letters of recommendation and a statement of purpose and your resume that would be needed when you submit your master's application. And there's also uh, time sensitive deadlines for it, which is very rigidly enforced. And all the cl courses that you take, the three classes that is a part of your master, uh, sorry, graduate certificate program, as long as you've scored a B or higher grade, we will be able to transfer those courses to your master's program. You also has a great visibility resources office which basically would help you if you need to get some kind of accommodation and checking your classes. So if you need any accommodation, please visit this link. This PowerPoint deck would be mailed out to everyone who attended today and those who did not make it either. But please visit the Disability Resources Office, make an appointment with them, and they will provide you with a, excuse me, also running short of breath, but a disability uh, accommodation letter 
And that letter is supposed to be given to each of your faculty members or whichever class you're taking for each term. In the beginning of the term, you're supposed to submit that letter to your instructor so they will make necessary arrangements within the course for you to take that class. Medical withdrawal, as I've mentioned, is also another thing. If something happens medically, please contact us at our departmental email and we'll help you through the process of getting those documents submitted. But those are HIPAA compliant documents and there is a specific portal that you'll have to submit it to. So we have to follow all the nine steps or whatever is required for them to get all the documentation they need. As far as graduation and grades, it is required that all graduate students maintain a 3.0 overall GPA to graduate from the graduate certificate or master's program. So it is very important for you to make sure that you're doing well in your classes. And as you get to the final term, you would be required during the final term to at least register for three credits if it is fall or spring and summer two credits to be eligible to graduate during those terms. The Dean of Students Office is your, um, I would say, a good point of contact, and you may want to familiarize yourself with the uh, Dean of Students Office. They also have a helpline for any uh, counseling um, assistance if you need any. They have a 24-hour line that you can call in in case of any help. Fee and payment deadlines. We have a little bit of flexibility for paying your tuition, but all the fee is paid through the one.uf portal, which is the student portal. And I would highly recommend that you bookmark the site for looking at the critical dates because that is where you would be going in to even submit your graduation application and so on and so forth. So again, thank you all for making time this afternoon and uh, bearing with my uh, weird voice this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I think that is pretty much it. Um, these are your contacts. Um, so our website, definitely check out our website. There are some additional resources on our website for you. You can contact us via phone. Um, these are the emails that are going to be important for you throughout your time with us. So again, please don't hesitate to reach out to me at any point for any reason. Um, I, I, even if it's just a, a what you think is a silly question, um, it is absolutely fine. So registration, uh, definitely the forensics at ahc.ufl.edu is your friend. Um, but again, if you have any questions or you're just not sure who to contact, you can always reach out to me um, and, and and I will put you in touch with whomever you need. Uh, one thing I do want to note is that you can take courses from another program. So our veterinary forensics program, our shelter, excuse me, shelter med program, forensic med program, they will all count. I believe it's three courses, nine credits max. You can transfer in from any of those three programs, but that's it. So you can't take a summer course at another university or, um, you know, maybe it's a community college and, and uh, try to transfer it in. It will not work. OK, so that has come up in the past. Please do not hesitate to reach out. I hope to see you in class. And if no one has any questions, have a fantastic fall semester. Thanks, guys. Thank you all for coming. Bye.